This is the story of how a familiar Chicago company came to be what it is today, the mightiest games manufacturer in the world. That may sound like a tall order, but we don't have to assume a fancy tone to tell this story, because basically the whole success story comes down to you, the customer, the operator, the owner of a Williams or Midway Valley game. You make a difference to your players, and you make a difference to us, because the way you conduct your business affects your bottom line and ours. At WMS Games Incorporated, we believe this strongly. In fact, we recently took your suggestions to heart. Then we revitalized our production facility. Our improved production capability helps us respond to your needs. Today, we're proud to be manufacturing outstanding, enhanced quality games, games engineered for ease of operation and maximum earnings. As a WMS customer, a distributor, operator, or player, you're a VIP with us. WMS listens to your concerns and responds. The bottom line is this. Your success with our products affects how we do business, but that's only the beginning of our interest in your success. Your success and your suggestions affect the products we develop for tomorrow. Games with that unique WMS Edge, games with a feature you've asked for, powerful, action-packed, up-to-the-minute, high-tech games, games engineered to be the best earners in the industry, as proven by years of consistent top dollar returns, games with stamina to keep earnings at their best for longer than other brands. Did you ever wonder how we consistently lead the pack Maybe you've noticed a little bit of our secret. The flash, the glitter, the sounds, and the action behind our WMS magic. We're not just referring to a game's appearance. To a player, that's only the beginning. Take another look. The player notices a lot of new games, but he plays WMS games, and he keeps on playing because WMS games offer unique audio-visual rewards and you keep on collecting and collecting more. The point is that WMS provides something extra for players at every level and operators at every location. WMS offers more. A player can keep developing as he learns new devices and features. Meanwhile, you receive consistent earnings. The games are reliable and players appreciate that as much as you do. In this videotape, we're going to initiate you into the secrets of pinball success. What we're going to share with you, with you today is our introduction to pinball technology. You'll discover that every high-tech pinball feature has a profitable benefit. Here are a few examples. Wedge-based lamps for easier replacement and fewer service calls, printed circuitry for more reliability over the long term, opto drop targets, less wear out than the previous mechanical designs, easy to maintain flippers, pop bumpers, side kickers, and other mechanical devices. Exclusive with WMS games is the built-in software for easy bookkeeping, automatic game adjustments, and the advanced diagnostics, a Williams innovation and still the best in the industry to keep your game on the profit peak. In this and future tapes, we'll tell you about these innovations. More important, we'll tell you how to unlock their fabulous earning potential. We'll emphasize maintenance, bookkeeping, and game diagnostics. Our series begins with an illustration of proper setup techniques. Now let's proceed with this first in our series of pinball success stories. Hi, I'm Tom Cahill with WMS Games, Parts and Service, and today we would like to give a little demonstration on assembling the game from the box. We did a brief tour of the plant and we showed you how the game was packed in. Now we want to take it out. I would like to have a volunteer from the audience to come up and give me a hand. Anybody that hasn't put a game together or really done too much with pinballs. Oh, I haven't. Oh, would you like to come up and assist us? Sure. Your name is? I'm Renata. Renata, mm -hmm. welcome to WMS. I'm Tom Cahill. Okay, what we have here is a Williams game in the box. I have got Pat Riley, service representative for Williams, and I have Bill Fry, service representative with Bally, Midway Games. Okay, would you two like to start uh, taking the game out of the box for us. Sure. 
Renee, I would like to have you ask me any questions that you have. When you see something that you don't understand or problems or uh, information that uh, doesn't sound clear, just step right in and ask me the questions. Okay. With the games, we have the first packing material. We have what we call a leg carton. And inside the leg carton, we have a cash box and the legs. And we'll open those later. The first thing we want to do is get everything out of the game. There's usually two ways of unpacking a game. The first method is to take the cabinet and the box and set it down. And we have on it signs that says up and top. Very important signs, use them. Remove the keys from the handle and do not lose. We want to pull the game out. Do not pull from the plunger. What's the plunger? The plunger is a ball shooter mechanism and we'll get to that in a few minutes when we get the game all put together. Okay, we want to save the box, so we'll set it up, set it, pick it up, and set it back out of the way. Now, excuse me, Renee, we want to put the game on a cart. We must move the cart over to you, please. When they lift the game up, I will slide the cart under. This is the hard part, and this is where you want to be careful on putting a game up. Okay, that's the main part on setting the game together, is getting it up and putting it away. Now, if they were to take the cabinet carton and cut it down from the front, then what they would do is mount the legs to the uh, cabinet and then uh, set it down and put the back legs on separately from the, from the back. Well, what kind of tools do I need to set the game up? That's a good question. The first things for the tools to get up is a knife and a pair of pliers or needle nose to take all the staples out of the cabinet on the carton. The other tools that we'll need will be strictly household tools like the uh, crescent wrench or socket wrench and a quarter inch drive to remove a blo uh, blocking block that we have on the back box. So these are very, very common tools. Very to common use. tools okay. that you get from the hardware store. The contents of the cash box will include the back box bolts. We will have some miscellaneous parts for extra fuses, lights, and lamp sockets. We will also have the leg levelers included in the cash box with the mounting bolts for the legs. We have the plumb bob weight with the two wing nut screws, and also included will be the balls. Let's take a look at one of the legs. Okay. Notice on the legs, too, that we have increased the length of this gusset on here to make our game much stronger. We've also added rivet nuts to increase the strength of the leg levelers that we have on the bottom of the game. Why do I need leg levelers? Leg levelers are for balancing the game out, for leveling the game in location on play. Let's get the rest of the parts here and put one of these leg levelers together. Oh, so in other words, if, if the floor is uneven, this would take care of the problem. Absolutely. Okay. And most locations are not level. The front leg, we'll put the nut on the leveler first and then just twist it right down into the leg. You want to go ahead and screw that all the way down. Front legs go all the way down. And the back legs will have a spacer on it. Well, why do I need this? nut on here. The nut is on there for locking the leg in place so the location or the players don't keep moving the legs around. And why is the spacer on the, the back? The spacer is for the back leg so we have a little more angle on the game itself so that we have a minimum of six degrees on the play field. That prevents the balls from jamming up and gives for faster play for the player. It's more excitement on the game. One thing in excitement we're going to find out is this is the 60th year anniversary for the development of pinball machines. 
there's going to be a lot of publicities and a lot of promotions for operating pinball machines and the players excitement and involvement in the game and Williams Valley Games Manufacturing has set up a procedures of developing a style for the players we design our games to get cash into the boxes we want those quarters all right now we're going to have the bill and Pat put the legs on. Remember the long legs with the levelers in back and the short ones in front. Now how do you know that you're at a six degree angle when you're putting the this together? Degree, the six degree angle we'll have to measure when we get the playfield glass off and we'll do that when we prepare the game for final setup and it's something that is very important I can't stress it enough that they have to keep the games at a angle of play that is suitable for the game itself. But Tom, wouldn't 10 degrees be better? I mean, the balls would go, you know, much faster. 10 degrees would be better and the player would really love it when he gets a 10 second game and the ball immediately goes out. But it plays too fast. Too fast. So we do have a place there where it's too slow and it's too fast. We have to set each game to its location to the desire of play. Okay, we have the legs on, and now we're ready to uh, set the game down on its legs. And we're ready to raise the back box. We'll get the cart out of the way. What we have done on the game is to lower the cabinet in the legs itself so that it builds in a self degrees in the cabinet so the players don't feel like we're jacking the game up to make a steeper angle. We build it into the cabinet so it looks like it's uh, a fairer play. Well now on this back box, what did they do that it just snapped right in? Uh, the back box, they had a latch in the back that is used only for helping to set up the back box. Let's retake the picture from back of the game and show how to set up the back box from behind. Lift the back box up, making sure that the cables are free from the holes in the setup. Lift it all the way up, then use the latch that's supplied only to help hold up the back box until the bolts for the back box can be properly secured. A lot of operators will use that latch in the back to operate their game and it'll vibrate loose and it will cause the back box to possibly fall down. So the most important thing when they're setting up a game ready for location is to make sure the back box bolts are mounted. This is a close-up view of the back box after the glass has been removed. Before you proceed we must remove the shipping block which is located up here on the top. Remove that screw and also the screws back behind the insert boards. After the screws have been removed, the insert board can be taken out. And we want to install the we want to install the back box bolts that were supplied in the cash box. One on the right hand side in the back, mount those in and tighten securely and the other one will go on the left hand side back on the back of the back box. Mount that securely. While you're checking this screw back here, also verify the ground strap wing lut nut is also tight. We noticed that there was a lot of paperwork on top of the game on the glass and also the manual was setting on top of the glass. For the first time users, they can at least get at the manual without having to open up the game and be able to see the information and read it for the instructions on the game. But do they, do they really read these? I mean, there's a lot here. Included with our games is also an instruction set which will have the manual a game registration card, a operator's handbook, and other data information for the game itself, including pricing cards and uh, game procedures. The main catalog or operating manual will be an extensive information 
covering everything needed to know about the game with regards to setup, game information, parts locations on the back box, and then section two will include the parts information, which will have all the part numbers with the associated uh, printed circuit boards. We also have detailed drawings of the assemblies and how they fit together with regards to all the items on the play field. Section three in the manual will be including all of the schematics on the setup. Also the drawings for location of the parts and the schematics. Also a sheet that I want to point out in the manual that is very important is the diagnostic chart that gives the complete block diagrams for how to operating the diagnostics test in the system from start to finish. Another section of the manual that has been requested by many operators is a detailed chart for all the wiring harnesses as to where they locate what color wires they are, and where they terminate on the system. This will give an indication of all the wires from the back box to the play field. Now that we have the game set up, and now we're getting ready to present the game so that we can do our first power on. But before we do our first power on, what we would like to do is make sure that there was no loose parts or anything on the game during shipment that came out on the setup. But we want to first take out the glass from the play field and what we do on that is we have a lock lever. We remove the front molding, set it aside. When removing the play field glass, be very careful in pulling it out of the game because it's tempered glass and it can very easily break. It'll shatter if you hit it on the edge of the glass. So when you remove it, grab it by the edges, pull it back carefully, set it down first time on your foot, and then set it on a piece of carpet or cardboard so that you don't break it and keep it out of the way. Do not set it against doors. Okay, glass is in. We want to take the back glass off. Why don't you take the back glass off? Now how does this work? Okay, unlock the key and then lift from the bottom very lightly on the rail and pull back. And careful, pulling okay. it down and pull it all the way out. Okay, and let me get rid of that glass and set it aside. Okay, we want to do the first check is in the back box. To open the back box, we removed our mounting bolts when we set up the game. Lift up this latch and just swing the insert back forward. And here's where we have all of our electronics. Are these fuses? Fuses in the game are set up for very easy replacement on the right hand side because we know most of the operators are right handed. So we placed our fuse boards on the easy location. You open your insert, you remove the glass, and we have all of our fuses exposed right here on the board. You'll notice that all the PC boards are mounted in the back box. Again, trying to keep our system simple. William Spally Midway has come up with our systems that we want to keep the KISS principle. Keep it simple is what we try to do. That's how I like it. I like yes. This At this time, I would like to do a quick comparison of the electronics from the Williams game to the Midway manufactured Bally game. As you can see on the back box of uh, Williams game, in the top left hand corner we have our music board with the memory chips that are set up for the game. Audio amplifiers right below the music system is our CPU board which is an 11B system. This controls all the solenoids, all the switches, and all the lamp circuits. Below the CPU board is our interconnect board which has all the wiring going from the play field to the back box. Also, the general illumination fuses are on this board. To the right of the CPU board is the auxiliary driver board with the fuses for the solenoid systems. Also on this auxiliary driver board, we have the diodes 
that were eliminated from all of the solenoids on the play field except for the flippers. This is made for a lot easier installation of solenoids in the game so that the wires don't get crossed. Right above the auxiliary driver board is the main power supply. We have the 5 volt section, the plus and minus 100 volt section with fuses going from the plus and minus 100 volts. Let's go over to the, let's see the insert board. We have the display board. On the Williams system, the displays are top to bottom on the alphanumeric system, and the speakers are also installed on the display insert board. Let's go over to the Midway Manufactured Valley game, and we will look at the insert board with the displays being side by side. The electronics on this display system is the same as on the Williams system. All the chips are interchangeable. Inside the back box, we'll notice the same music board, same type of chips for memory, just different game, audio amplifiers, the CPU board system with the same electronics. This is the 11B system. Right below the CPU board is our interconnect wiring board general illumination fuses. To the right of the CPU is the auxiliary driver board which has been helpful in the diodes elimination off the coils. Also we've been able to incorporate more 50 volt coils through this system. You'll notice that this board and the one on the Williams game are identical. Above the Interconnect or the uh, auxiliary driver board is the power supply with the plus and minus 100 volts for the displays and the 5 volt system. The boards on the Midway Manufactured Valley game and the Williams game are interchangeable. All that has to be changed is the program chips. We notice that all the harnesses seem to be neat in order. The back box is in place. We mounted the lock bolts for the head box and we're pretty much ready to do a quick play field check. So I will uh, also mention that our power supply system, our music system, our auxiliary driver board system is uh, on the setup. The auxiliary driver board system has saved many operators problems with the transistor solenoid drive circuits going bad when they have a shorted solenoid. We blow the fuse now. I just want to back up. I thought earlier we said that it locks in the back. Why do I need these bolts here then? You need the bolts there for during play when the operator, when the players start playing the game. Pinball machines are designed to be shaken and moved around. Physical interaction. The players like entertainment. And the bolts are there to make sure that if this back latch comes loose, it doesn't allow the back box to fall down. And in transporting of the game, we want to make sure that they take those bolts out and set the back box down on the play field. Another point brings up when transporting the game, make sure they cover the play field with newspaper or a cloth. Why is that? Well, sometimes the uh, transportation of the game, you'll end up out in the sunshine and this ultraviolet light will melt or warp all the plastics and it's a very expensive process of changing all the plastics and uh, replacing the ramps in a game so it's a precaution. Mm -hmm. Also operating the game in front of a window can make the same thing happen. It also fade the color. Shut the insert, put the display back in, it just slides into the slots and we want to do a quick check on the play field. Also remove the paperwork, the notes, information of the system, tips and processes. Install the mylars if you want at this time. Let me set these aside. Excuse me, I missed that. What are mylars? You had mentioned those earlier. Okay. Mylars are the clear plastic protective coating glued on parts that cover the uh, painted area on the play field. Again, it protects the wood and the paint from scratches and uh, ball bouncing. Now one thing that happens with the mylars, a lot of operators feel that they have to have mylars so they don't have to clean their game. And this is very wrong. 
preventive maintenance and cleaning of the games are your most important features in operating the game. Now, on this playing surface, what's on here? I mean, is that wax or...? We have installed some mylars on a play field where it's very difficult for the operator to get at for the ramps for life on the system as it is. So we have tried to help them out in some of the areas. Okay, we're going to lift the play field up and do a quick check on the bottom. Again, in order to lift it, just simply lift from the center of the play field, lift up. It's on a hinge system so that the game will pivot. We want to do a quick check of the bottom of the cabinet and make sure everything's there. We have to look for the wires might have loosened up, make sure the connectors are connected on the drop targets, the insert boards, uh, and any of the other devices. Now what if they're not? I mean, if I don't, I am not a technical person, but, you know, is this very easy? To, can I call someone or how does that work? What will happen if one of these devices hasn't got the wire on it and we didn't check it when we have the play field up at mm -hmm. this time, we will try to catch that when we go through the diagnostics procedure. Oh, that will indicate then yes. that something's wrong? We will have uh, diagnostics will come up in our system and give a, a detailed information of things that could be wrong with the game. Tom, can you tell me a little bit about diagnostics? Sure. Let's use our new game show game that we have. Could you come around and turn the game on for me? Sure. Switch power on is bottom right-hand corner. Switch on. We come into the game mode where we get into our diagnostics is by opening the front coin door. On the inside of our coin door, you'll find that we have our micro switches for counting the coins, the coin acceptors that reject coins, uh, the bracket to hold the switches for our diagnostics. On that bracket, we have the high score reset switch the auto up manual down switch which determines if you're going into diagnostics or bookkeeping and then our advanced switch when we want to change conditions on diagnostics we just press the advance in the auto up mode you want to press the advance button sure and it goes into a message and it's given the indication of what it is it's saying it's music off we're doing the music test now to energize the music test, we would just use the credit button or the start button on the game and press it. To operate, we'll go into a sound mode. Credit button will tell you which one you're at. Notice the numbers going down. That's because the auto up manual down switch is in a down position. Go to the up position, press the credit button, and the numbers will go up each different theme song. Press the advance. We go into our next test, which is the display test. When you want to stop, push in manual down position. Use your advance button to cycle you one at a time. Auto up will cycle through the test completely. In the auto up condition, when you advance the next time through, you will go into the next test, which will be all lamps that this time all the lamps that are s controlled by the computer will be flashing on the system. If you have any problems with the lamps, you can use your diagnostics again by going into the advance and it'll go to single lamps. It'll give the indication of the name of the lamp and on the other display, it'll give the lamp location number. To change lamps, just use the credit button and it'll cycle through to different positions on the lamps and check with the play field and the name of the lamp that is on the display to see what the condition is. Press the advance button one more time. You go into coil test. It'll give you the name and then it'll give you the number on the display. Cycle through the whole system monitoring each of the coils as they're being actuated. If you want to stop at any time, just press in the manual down, then operate with the advance. Go from each different lamp test as it is. Cycle by itself. Go into the auto up and it will automatically cycle. Comparing your 
solenoid check with what's in the manual. It will give you a helpful aid in troubleshooting any problems. Press advance, you go into your switch test. It will indicate any switches that are being made. Also, when you go into diagnostics test, if the switch mo mode comes up, it'll give you an indication of a possible stuck switch or a switch that is not operating properly. The computer system automatically recognizes these switches that have not been operated and will bypass the switches in game play so that we can do normal game play to keep the game up and running for the player's benefit. Press advance. It'll go into the switch edge test. Switch edge test only is used for diagnostics and for testing your switches. When testing the switch, use a ball to go through the switch on the play field to do any of your adjustments. So if you use your finger, you may actuate your switches further. Make sure that they work with the ball and give the right number. Pressing advance, we go into the game ID, which puts us into our bookkeeping mode. And I want to go very briefly into the bookkeeping, and we go into our diagnostics. We gave a ID of the game. We press the advance like we did in our diagnostics press through, we go into conditions of the game, and it'll give you the indication coins in the cash box. Left coins, center coins, right coins, and total paid credits. This is our bottom line, how many credits we're paid for, and this is what we're looking for. And these are the numbers that are very much higher than our competitions, keeping our product number one in the industry. Thanks, Tom. This has definitely been very informative. I didn't realize how easy it is to operate a pinball. Well, I want to thank you for helping me today. But before we go, I would like to introduce Linda Schooley, our part sales manager. Hi, Renat. It's very nice to meet you today. Nice to meet you, Linda. At this time, I'd like to talk to you about replacement parts. It's very important when you're servicing our games that you always use factory authorized replacement parts. Not only are these parts quality assured, but you're automatically guarantee that the parts have been made to the original manufacturer's specifications. In order to make your parts needs requirements much easier, WMS Games has pu uh, published this parts catalog in fall of 89 and it's available at your local distributor. As you notice, everything's clearly marked as pinball cabinets and back boxes, ball guides, electromagnetic devices, and quickly you can locate the part that you need to order. Great. I'm also very happy to announce at this time that WMS is starting to package their replacement parts. You'll find that these are on display at your local distributor and you can identify the part quickly. It also makes it easier for you when you're going out on your route. We're also going a step further and actually package, packaging parts kits. This is a flipper kit, which has all the parts you need to maintain your flippers. Thank you for being with us. Thanks. Hi, I'm Larry Kesselman, Vice President of Business Development. With over 100 years' experience between them, both of our companies are recognized as the industry leaders. We have advanced the state-of-the-art pinball product with quality workmanship and streamlined manufacturing procedures. But these are only the first steps in creating solid product. The most important factors in any amusement games are obviously what's in the cash box, the durability of the game, and the ease of service. Last but not least, if problems do arise, a fast response from the manufacturer is imperative. Williams Electronics and Midway Manufacturing will continue to support you, the operator and distributor, with quality products, innovative technology, second to none, and a parts and service area recognized as the best in the industry. We welcome your questions and comments and encourage you to think of the manufacturer-operator relationship as a team effort. Thank you very much.